Okay, so even if you are making some basic films and you are having to wear all the hats of all the people involved yourself, uh, there's still three main stages of filmmaking and you need to be aware of what goes on at each stage. And so we're gonna talk about it now. You need to have a kind of an idea. Uh, I'll kind of give you the breakdown as it would go through a Hollywood film, but uh, with you, you're gonna have to, again, kind of this make it work on your own, figure out what you actually need and what you don't need, that kind of thing. So in Hollywood, it begins with the film getting greenlit. This means somebody, uh, a producer, has decided, I like this film here, and we want to go. So we green light the film, and we say, yes, let's do it. The money's there, all that. So once the film is green lit, uh, then you're going to have your script and your story. Sometimes it's written beforehand, which helps it get green lit. Sometimes it's not even written yet, and they hire writers on the spot to say, here's the film we want you to make. Write it about this. And then the writer goes, and hopefully they do a good job. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Uh, so you got your script, your story part. Then you got storyboarding. The script is done. You get the director brought in, and then they storyboard it. They kind of write out the stories. They draw pictures. They have renderings made of the different parts, and they figure out how they're going to shoot this film with what kind of shots, and so that's what storyboards do. Uh, a read-through is something where they gather all the actors involved that are going to help make the film, and they read through the script together, and it kind of gives everybody a chance to be on the same page as far as what's going on in the director's head concerning what the film's supposed to be. So it's really easy to read through a script together, and if the director's there, if somebody has a question, the director can explain to them what he's seeing, but everybody else has the benefit of hearing the director as well, so that's a great thing. Camera tests is where they go out, and they take their camera, and believe it or not, they test it, uh, which means they go and they take shots of different things, and make sure that the camera's gonna work. For instance, you know, if they wanna do a slow-mo shot, they'll take a bunch of different cameras out that shoot at high frame rates, and they'll film a bunch of them and say, hey, which camera looks the best? Which camera works the best? Which camera has better lenses? Things like that. So they'll do camera tests and make some executive decisions on what kind of camera they're gonna use. Crew gathering, they gotta hire everybody that's gonna be involved to help make the film. So all those crew positions, gotta find them, gather them together. Same with the actors, they're gonna get the actors involved, gather them together, and location scouting. They're gonna be out figuring out what locations can they use for the film. And if it's at a mall or at a convenience store, or at a park, you know, they gotta make sure that they they can block off those areas, film at certain times, schedule, all that kind of stuff. So all that is what we call pre-production. It's the stuff that really happens before you ever start making the film. It's all the planning, all the conceptual elements that happen, boom, right there at pre-production. It's a really important stage. That's the stage where really the overall vision for the film takes place. So before you just grab a camera and run outside and start filming the next thing that you see, uh, why don't you pause and plan out everything before you go. A lot of films really uh, really miss out on this area because they don't plan well and so the final film isn't really done well and so planning the film really hugely important pre-production. Then we get to the second stage which is production. Yep, production. A bunch of production words. Here we go. So in production that is where you make the film, okay? It's, in my opinion, the most fun time, the most exhausting of the times, but the most fun stage of filmmaking. So this is where you're going to be capturing the video and capturing the audio for the film. This is where the scenes are gonna take place. Uh, a lot of times in this section, they'll have call times, which is just a schedule saying, hey, we need actors and people who are helping here at this time at you know 8 a.m. because we're filming at 9 a.m. and we need everybody there ready and mic'd up, all that kind of stuff. So you got call times, you got sets involved at this point. And you know, if they're building anything, if they need a special set, well, they've already been built by this time, so they're working on a film set. You have blocking going on, which this is where we teach actors, okay, you start the scene on this part, you're gonna move over to B, then C, and you have all of your blocking kind of put in, which is just telling them where they need to be in the scene, what they need to be doing in the scene, what do they pick up, what do they throw down, things like that. That's all in blocking. You've got the film slate, which we're gonna do a whole little thing on language on set with the film slate, but this is the little clapper and it syncs the audio and sound together. So you're gonna see a lot of films like, you know, take one, click, and then they're gonna be doing that. So we'll show you about that. Uh, you have action, which is everybody's quiet on the set, and then you hear the director yell action, and you actually are gonna have the people acting out the scenes, and that's fun. And then when you are done, when they film the last shot for the film, and they've got them, you know, all the other shots are done, and they reach the end, they'll say cut, and then the director says, it's a wrap, which means wrap it all up, put a bow on it, the film is done, we're gonna move on to stage three. Okay, so now you've filmed the film, you got it all done, but it's all in little pieces, it's not really put together, and so that's why you have your third stage in film production, which is post-production. This is everything that happens after, get this, production, I know. 
the words make sense. Um, and here's where a lot of really fun stuff happens. First you have editing. And this is where they take all the film clips, gather them together, import them into the computer, and start actually putting them in order, the order that they need to be in to tell the story. So a lot of that happens in editing. This is where color correction comes in, uh, grading, all that kind of stuff. We're not gonna talk about a lot of that in this class. A little bit of editing, but not a lot of the heavy duty stuff. We'll do that at a different time. Uh, then this is where film lock comes in. So what happens is the editor edits the film. He gets it all organized from beginning to end. And then once they've watched it through and made sure everything is looking good, even though it's still a little bit raw, they lock the film, which means that is the final film. It's not done yet, but it means the time of the scenes, the cuts of the scenes are not going to change from that point on. And so it's really important that they have film lock because at that point is when they start doing special effects which is they look at it and say, what do we need to add in? Do we need to add in lasers? Do we need to add any kind of action or explosions? They need to know, okay, the explosion only lasts this long. So you can't be adding special effects in when a film is not locked together. So it's really important that they get the film lock early. Then they do special effects. And then they do what we call ADR. Now what ADR is, is perhaps they filmed a scene on a set and the actors talking, the other actors talking, they're talking along, but the audio just really isn't that good. Maybe they were outside, maybe it was windy. For whatever reason, the audio is just not that good. So what they do is they bring the actor back into a studio, they play the scene for him on a big screen on a wall, and then what they do is they put a microphone in front of them and they teach the actors how to talk and uh, basically redub what they said on the actual set. So the actor will wear headphones and hear what they're saying, but at the same time, they'll have somebody cue them in and say, you're gonna say this line again. And they have to basically react their whole scene just using their voice and trying to get it exactly right. Most ADR people are so good at this, at recording uh, people doing their voice, that you might see a scene, even with close-ups going on, and you will have no idea that that's not the exact thing that they actually said, that it's just a film and a different audio line synced together, and you'll have no idea that they've done it. They're so good. This is also where they have Foley. Foley comes in, they look at the film, and they say, okay, here's what the film looks like. What sounds need to be in? Does there need to be a train off in the distance? Does there need to be a car? Do we need to add in some sounds? What about footsteps? Did they get good footsteps? We'll add that in. Is uh, any glass breaking, anything like that? They're gonna add in all those sounds. So that's what a Foley artist does. Uh, then you're going to have scoring. Scoring is hugely important. This is where the composer comes in, they work with the director, and the director says, here's what's going on in the movie, and at this point we need to be sad or happy or whatever it happens to be, and the composer then uh, starts scoring the film, bringing custom music into the film and getting really pretty themes and things like that. So, you know, anytime you hear a, a really good movie score, you'll remember the music from it forever, like Star Wars or something like that. Everybody knows the theme song for Star Wars. Uh, then you have rendering. Rendering is where, okay, you insert all the sounds, you insert all the Foley, the ADR, you add the music into the film, then you have the whole film, but it's on a computer, and we need to render it all together. So you have rendering, which is they render it all into one big picture. Now in digital films, rendering is really simple because they just click a couple buttons, and then the computer actually processes the film and locks it as one big movie file, right? If this was actual film, when they would render it, they would render it into a movie file, but then re print it onto film to send the theater. So that's a way different process. We're not gonna be messing with that at all here. Uh, and that takes you to the last thing in post-production, which is distribution. The movie's gotta get seen somewhere, right? It's gotta go to a theater, go to DVD, go to Redbox, whatever it happens to be. And so it's gotta go into distribution. So at that point, the film is pretty much done. The artist's work is all done and it's out wrapped. You can go buy it at Target or Walmart and boom, you have a movie right there in your hand. So all that has to happen. So there are three stages. Let's go back over them. You got pre-production. That's the concept part. You have production. So let's go back over it real quick. You've got the pre-production. That's where the concept part happens. Then you've got production. That's where you're actually making the film. And then post-production. That's where you put all the pieces together and actually make a movie. So three different stages. And while all this sounds really heavy duty stuff, and you're probably not gonna be using a lot of these things early on, you gotta just remember, even you, when you're making a film, is gonna go through these stages. You're gonna have your planning stage. You're gonna have the stage where you grab your camera, you get out and your friends and you're filming something. And then you're gonna have the uh, post-production stage where you're actually putting the film together on whatever app you're using on your computer to make a movie. So you're still going to be doing all three things. So it's really good to know the three stages and what goes on in each.